Hello and welcome to Florian Models Kit View Time. Today we've got Rebels 148 scale Bowfighter TF10 or X if you wanted to. Again, strange kit for them to do because let's face it, we have got Tamiya. Tamiya did one of these a long time ago now, to be honest, but it's still a, a, a golden, olden kit. It's one of those ones which is just a really good, straightforward kit. But anyway, Ravel have come along, so we'll have a look to see how good this one actually is. See, nice bit of box art uh, with the actual uh, anti. Uh, naval work down in there as well with the D-Day type markings on there. So that looks very, very nice indeed. Just again, a little bit round on the box. Not too much to see down in here. Uh, kit number for this one is 03943. And then on the back, being Revell's normal boxes, we get a few more looks at it. And to be honest, it looks pretty good down in there, as you can see on there. So, box is sealed, and it's one of their nice open-ended boxes that we don't like, but hey-ho. And fully in here, get all that out. As you can see we've got quite a bit of stuff. So we've got a couple of bags, I think we've got three sprues in there. We've got the wing sections down in there, we've got a few in there, we've got fuselage bits down in there, we've got some with the clear parts, which look like they're wrapped up quite nicely. Engine parts, and we've got props and various bits in there like that. And I think we might have a match pair. Uh, for those as well, for the left and right hands. So, as always, we'll start off with the, the instruction. There's our decals. A little bit of blurb. We've got the color call outs, which are obviously always a nightmare. Uh, we've got the spruce. So, looking pretty good down in there like that. And then, obviously, we've got it all going together. So, as always, we're down into the cockpit area, working out. Really nice cockpit on the actual uh, Bowfighter, being the sort of single seat layout. Uh, so, you're sitting in the middle of it, even though it's quite a large aircraft. So, you can see we've got those going in. We've got the instrument panels, rudder pedals. Looks like we've got nice raised details all the way down in there. And again, we've got decals, which are going to be going over the top uh, to put in your actual instruments. Seat going down, a couple of bulkheads. We've got, like, the wing roots being fitted down in there just like that and then obviously more bulkheads being fitted in down into the back of this one and then I think these are the guns uh, the actual ammunition for the guns uh, down in there and all the parts making up the interior then we've got the mid sections as well so obviously we've got the navigator and we've actually got the, the sort of rear gunner station in there as well and then we've got the gear going together so gear being put in there so this is obviously the tail wheel one going through and then the tail wheel section being fitted up down and in there there is some nicks to open up so obviously got some aerial points i think going down in there and then it's talking about sandwiching it all together with the actual fuselage completed front section going on so again i think this depends on which version you're doing if you're having the sort of you know pronounced nose or the normal flat one and then obviously we've got the canopy and obviously you have got an open this does arch open uh it has got hinges if i remember rightly it, it hinges to the right so if you wanted to on the ground you could have it open as well gun being fitted down into there and then again with the gun system you can have it hinged as well so that will hinge over to the side or you can have it closed up whichever way you want to do it so forth and so on working down on the wing section again drilling out some holes down in there things like that fitting the various parts in for the actual wings for the gear uh, mounts being fitted down in there all of those being fitted bulkheads rear flap sections as well looks like so perhaps we do get uh, posable flaps which would be quite nice and then obviously the same with the other sides and then obviously engine bits tops of the wings being fitted on there we've got actually the light covers being fitted on there again there's different versions things like that the actual navigation lights fitted and then yes we do we get posable flaps which is a really nice touch depending if you're having them uh, deployed or you're having them up position cutting a few bits off and then same for the outer systems as well being fitted in there and again really nice actually with the ailerons as well being posable as well so if you wanted to give them a little bit of deflection i think that would look lovely and then that entire wing section being fitted up underneath it uh, as well so you can go through on that one then we've got the entrance as well you've got the little ladder if you wanted it down or not that's actually quite nice as well so you could have that open or closed engines again doesn't look too bad details we've obviously got the pots being fitted down in there we have got both rows of them in, in there so that's going to be quite nice for the actual radial engine exhaust system coming off things like that as that one's going in and again we have got the option if you wanted to to have it opened up so we could have the doors open on there to show off some of that nice engine detail if you'd like and again same with the cowling flaps as well open or closed if you wanted to have those in there to show a little bit of detail from the outside 
exhausts being fitted down into there intakes being fitted onto there as well and then obviously those being fitted in and we've got a few little air scoops things like that going in the back moving down to the tail so obviously we've got the tail plane control surfaces being fitted down in there we've got the counterweights going on there and all the various parts down as you might think in there and the trim tabs rudder and again rudder is posable as well so you can deflect the rudder a little bit to make it really nice and then depending on the gear so up or down if you're doing it in flight you could easily just pop it down in there like that or again straightforward build right the way through on this one with the actual gear being fitted down into there and it's a nice slot fit up in afterwards so nice thing about that is the painting you can do it all exactly afterwards as those fit in and then again we've got a few other parts being fitted in the back there as well for the actual gear and then obviously it'd be gear doors being fitted on right the way through props and spinners being fitted onto that one as well depending on which one you're doing aerials being fitted down in there we've got a pitot tube being fitted and then the torpedo for the underside depending obviously on which version you're doing as well markings pretty much that sort of you know sea gray right the way over that one and then obviously the uh, uh what do they call it sky uh underneath as well so that's actually quite a nice color scheme or as i say you've got the other one down in here i think this is the radar version and again it's got the slightly bulbous nose onto that one and then under there have to say because i do know the epic uh, the tamiya one quite nicely uh that looks really nice some nice details on that i like the way you've got all the detail with the engines especially because that's quite nice to have them open and shown and again popping in there with a little bit of wire and stuff should give you a little bit of detail but again all the control surfaces are posable so that's really nice as well right so down in here we'll fight our way through the bag system if we can get in we can have a look at some of these parts so okay so as you imagine it's usual thing it's all recessed details right the way through so looking very nice on there and you can probably catch it in the light we've got some real nice bits of attention to detail down here at the back we don't have any riveting or anything else like that but that's something you could pop in there really straightforward on these it has got just little bits of bits of flash and things on there as well but again it's just on these edges and sometimes with the reveal kits you can get a little bit of flash but it's usually a couple of swipes with a sanding stick and you'll be absolutely fine i can't see any sink marks or anything else like that so that's quite nice and again down in here with the internals we haven't got any uh, details which are going to be affected. There's a, perhaps maybe way one down. I don't know how well you see it. But again, we haven't got ejector pins all the way through this, which is going to affect your overall finishing. That ejector pins are down, tucked out of the way. So that's actually quite nice to see that done just like that. Obviously, we've got two of those for the fuselage halves. Whilst we're here, we've got the different nose and some of the areas down here on K. So you can see, really quite nice with that one. To be honest, the plastic just feels a little bit quite strong plastic, quite a hard plastic, which is quite nice. Some of the details down in there as well for the bulkheads. Very nice indeed. And then we've got some of the tails. So again, we've got the fabric covered tails down in here looking very nice. And there's the lower tail section. And again, not a lot to see under here, locating pins. Eject pins are all tucked out of the way. They're not standing proud or anything else like that. So that's quite nice indeed. It's actually really hard type plastic, which is really nice to see. Uh, we've got this little guy down in here, which is obviously your tail wheel. So we've got the tail wheel bits just down there like that. Right? We'll just move these out of the, the way. <coughs> and then over here, we've got the tops uh, and the actual, we've got the various things so it looks like we've got two different types of tail down in here so just making sure which version you've got but down in here we've got the torpedo for the bottom top of the straight we've got some of the bulkheads top of the rudder sway braces for the torpedo back end of the torpedo and then round on here as you can see we've got some different tail planes so obviously there probably is going to be a slight difference to both of those but that's really nice as well so that's good then we've got the Wings, wings and things. Just wondering if we can get out of there, which we can. Okay, so under section of the wings looks nice. I have to say the plastic is harder than we're used to. It's actually that nice, tougher, crispier plastic. 
So uh, I don't want to get bogged down in the argument about which plastic's best and all the rest of it, because I'll just get flamed for it, clearly. But I do like it. It's actually really, really nice stuff to work with. Again, down in here, we've got inspection panels, various things like that. That's all looking very nice indeed. And generally, the level of detail is really very, very nice. I think if you used to pop around and re-rivet this, you'd end up with something really quite special. So that is very, very nice indeed. And down in here with these guns, they're not completely drilled out and opened, but you could do if you wanted to and add a little bit more detail. And obviously you're going to be cutting away this central part for the boarding uh, for the crew. So that's actually really nice. We've got the ejector ports down the back here. Really actually very, very nice detail. Down in here, nice and clean. It's actually a really nice, clean, crisp build. You know, it's a 2018 kit, but it, uh, it feels more, a lot more modern. And again, on the wing sections, catch it in the light, you can see we've got some really nice details down in there. And again, it's actually, I think this is one of those kits that are typical of Revell, which is, you know, it looks basic, but it doesn't take a lot to just bring it up to speed. And again, it's nice, we haven't got any ejector pins down in here. They're all tucked up in here in the wing sections. This is clear. So that's really nice indeed. So that's very, very nice. Getting on to some more of the detail parts down in here. So here we've got sprue A. And as you can see, we've got quite a bit going around in here. So we've got bulkheads, we've got the floor, and then obviously down on here, we've got some of the lumps and bumps. We've got some of the, the internal structure down in here in the cockpit. We've got the flaps, which I bet they're just actually marks in the plastic. I was wondering what they are, but they're actually just marks in the plastic. And again, we don't have any ejector pins on those flaps at all, which is nice. The seat detail down in here, we've got some lap belts just lying down. Obviously, you could sand those off and go in there with a little bit of uh, aftermarket ones or make up your own. And again, the control surfaces are all pretty nicely done. Actually, this kit is really growing on me. It looks very, very nice indeed. And again, we've got the some more of the parts for around the wings. We've got the rudder, all the different areas. Got the tails. So the cockpit details all look very nice and sharp. So that's pretty good. Different types down in here. Obviously we've got different versions. We haven't seen it yet. And here we are a few years down the line, but hopefully we will later on. Uh, cockpit details, wheel well details, things like that. That's all looking very nice and sharp. And then last up, we've got a match pair of these. So we'll just look at one because they're identical. Okay, so if we start down in here, we've got the, the actual engine covers. Looking very, very nice indeed. Again, we do have some ejector pins in here. You're gonna have to grind and sand them out, but it's not a massive job, so that's quite nice. And then down in here, we've got the props the various parts, so moving on the top, see some of the air scoops, some of the gear bits. Uh, got the doors closed up for the belly, or you can just cut it and then split it in two, and that's quite nice. Got no ejector bins down in there, so that's really nice indeed. The prop, pretty nice. Got a little bit of burring on that one. You can probably see it on that edge, just sand those out, but generally very nicely done. We have got the odd little sink mark. You probably see it just down in here and on here, but again, tiny little note. You wouldn't really notice it, that's the point. I don't know if it's even worth doing. The exhausts, that funny old porcupine exhaust, I call it, but it looks pretty darn good. Again, I know there's a little bit of aftermarket available for this one if you wanted to go down that route as well to add a little bit of detail to this. We got the spinner, looking pretty darn good. And then down on here, we've got the, the wheels and gear, and most importantly, we've got the engines. So that's all pretty good. Again, a little bit of sink marking up in here. Revell tend to get that, to be honest. It doesn't take too much, but again, it depends really how worried you are about it. And then again, just down in here, we do have, there's a little bit of detail on all of the engines. So actually, I think by the time you've used to paint this and then obviously give it a wash, an oil wash especially, you'll get all that ribbing for the cooling vanes, which should pop out and have no problem at all. We don't have weight on wheels, which is a shame. But we do get, obviously, we said before, we've got the cow flaps open or closed. We've got that exhaust system coming off and all the rest of it. That front ring being fitted on there. Again, it all looks pretty darn good. Very nice indeed. Okay, last we've got the clear parts. 
and get in. You might need a knife here. Okay, so bubble rear gunners. To be honest, that's really nice. Very, very nice indeed. It's distorted, but you know, it's almost impossible to get a bubble. I think the real thing's probably distorted a bit. But actually, that's not too bad at all. Very nice indeed. We've got some of the lights, top hatches we were talking about, the light windows, various things. We've got gun sight down in here, nav lights, landing lights, things like that. And then obviously we've got the front cockpit glass, which is absolutely beautiful. Really very nice. It's got a little bit of distortion down in there, but that's a complicated shape. I'd rather it be in one and a good fit than be multi-part just to get that tiny little bit more clarity into it. And there we go. So we have got the... You can have this opened up as well, which is a nice touch when it's on the ground. Really nice. Just last to look at is obviously the decals. And to be honest, like most manufacturers now, the decals are pretty good. Nice sort of satin finish, good solid color to them. No problem with that at all. Unfortunately though, just being honest, this is a little bit, yeah, very much a generic instrument panel. And because of all that glass work that we got down in here, the chances are you're gonna see this. So it might be worth thinking about going down an aftermarket route, perhaps get yourself a color photo etch set or something else like that for it just to improve that or you know obviously if your skills are up to it replacing out all the dials uh, and doing it yourself but again really very very nice decals in all of that so there you have it that is actually something really very very nice indeed and like i've said before and i've got up there to be honest i've got the p51 i've got the spitfire i've got the 109 i've got the 190 and now obviously we've got the actual bow fighter with a little bit more work down into those you can make them really really special and let's face it it doesn't take too much i'm thinking a little bit of wiring if you're gonna have those engines showing a little bit of plumbing down in there and a nice paint job will really make those engines absolutely pop and alive and then down in the interior maybe a set of harnesses down in there and an aftermarket instrument panel and you've got something really really smart exterior wise i'm thinking maybe just a small rivet job right the way over it would just make it pop and come alive and what you're going to end up with something really very very special so you've got all the basics there to turn it into something really nice or you can just do it out of the box and have a pretty nice kit as well and that's the great thing with all the Ravel kits it gives you the starting point for a straight out of the box build no problem have a fantastic enjoyable build but if you wanted to you could just take it to that next level and turn out with something really really exceptional and that's the beauty about their kits as well a little bit of patience a little bit of modeling time down in there and you can make them just that little bit more special so there we go that is the Ravel 48 scale Bowfighter Mark 10. Thank you.